Proclaim the salvation of God day by day. Tell among the nations his glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. My dear fathers, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, indeed we have gathered here around this altar, the altar of grace, where Mother Mary appeared to the three shepherd little children and has given a beautiful message to the whole world, to the whole universe, to repent, to pray, and very specially for peace, peace in the world. Well, we have gathered here to offer this Mass as a thanksgiving Mass for all the favors we have received through the intercession of Blessed Virgin Mary, and also to seek her blessings on each one of us, to our families, to the places wherever we have come from, so that God continues to bless us, and God continues to convert us, make us as agents of peace, agents of God's message, wherever we are, and whatever we are. Today, the church keeps the feast of Saint Bartholomew, the Apostle. And whenever we celebrate the feast of any apostle, we are reminded of our own responsibilities that we need to be an apostle to the other. We need to bear Christ and his message, the gospel, to others. Well, to prepare ourselves for the worthy celebration of this Eucharist, let us call to mind the moments we have failed, ask for God's pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to Lord our God, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Strengthen in us, O Lord, the faith by which the blessed Apostle Bartholomew clung wholeheartedly to your Son, and grant that through the help of his prayers, your church may become for all the nations a sacrament of salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, his Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. 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 A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. The angel of the Lord came to speak to me and said, 
Come here and I will show you the bride and the lamb he married. In the spirit, he took me to the top of the enormous high mountain and showed me Jerusalem, the holy city, coming down from God out of heaven. It had all the radiant glory of God and glittered like some precious jewel of crystal clear diamond. The walls of it were of great height and had 12 gates. At each of the 12 gates, there was an angel, and over the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. On the east, there were three gates. On the north, there were three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. The city wall stood on 12 foundation stones each one of each of which here bore the name of the name of the one of the 12 apostles of the lamb this is the word of the lord your responsory psalm your friends O lord make known the glorious splendor of your reign your friends O lord make known the glorious splendor of your reign all your creatures shall thank you O lord and your friends shall repeat their blessing. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your might, of, O God. Your friends, O God, make known the glorious splendor of your reign. They make known to me your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your reign. Yours is an everlasting kingdom. Your rule lasts from age to age. Your friends, O Lord, make known the glorious splendor of your reign. The Lord is just in all his ways and loving in all his deeds. He is close to all who call him, who call on him from their hearts. Your friends, O Lord, make known the glorious splendor of your reign. Shall we stand for gospel acclamation? Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to your glory to you. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have Nathanael. Can anything good come from that place? Come and see, replied Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming, he said to him, There is an Israelite who deserves the name, incapable of the sight. How do you know me? said Nathanael. Before Philip came to call you, said Jesus, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael answered, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus replied, you believe that just because I said, I saw you under the fig tree, you will see greater things than that. And then he added, I tell you most solemnly, 
you will see heaven laid open and above the sign of man, the angels of God ascending and descending. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Je Jesus Christ. Your Lordship, and my dear people of God. Uh, today, the Catholic Church all over the world celebrates the feast of Saint Bartholomew, Apostle. Bartholomew is also known as Nathaniel, especially in the, in the fourth gospel, he's also described as Nathaniel. When we read the life of Bartholomew, we discover that he was born in Cana in Galilee. He was born in Cana in Galilee. And tradition has it that after the resurrection that he preached in India, where he was martyred. That is why the color of today is, is red. So after the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, he moved towards India, where he preached the gospel and also where he met his martyrdom. My dear brothers and sisters, what can we, we learn from the, the feast of today, from the life of Bartholomew and the, and the life of Philip? We are told in the gospel of today that Bartholomew was introduced to the faith, was introduced to Jesus Christ by his friend Philip. He was introduced by Philip that Philip met our Lord Jesus Christ and was inspired by the encounter he had with Jesus Christ. And he went to inform his friend. He went to inform Bartholomew that I have seen the Messiah. I have seen that man of whom the, the scripture talked about, the Old Testament talked about. I have seen him and he is from Nazareth. And Bartholomew was, was disappointed that how can the Messiah that the, the whole world has been waiting for, how can the Messiah come from, from Nazareth? My dear people of God, what can we learn from these two people, from the life of Philip? Philip had an encounter with Jesus Christ and he, went to, he wanted to introduce his friend to Jesus Christ. And that uh, the meeting of Bartholomew and Jesus Christ brought a transformation in his life. All of us as Christians, we have a vocation. Our vocation is to bring people to the church, to bring people to Christ, not to lead people away from Christ, but to bring people to Christ. But unfortunately, sometimes, because of the way we live our lives, because of our life of hypocrisy, and also because of the fact that we do not uh, uh, live out the gospel, instead of leading people to Christ and to the church, we end up leading people away from the church. Today, the church is facing a lot of challenges because of our inability to live the Christian life. Many people are leaving the church because of the scandal caused by Christians. And sometimes, even because of the scandal caused by us ministers, Many people leave the church because of our attitude and because of our behavior. We have to imitate the example of Philip to lead people to the church, to lead people to Christ, and not to lead people away from Christ by our life of hypocrisy. And then what can we learn from the, from the life of Bartholomew? Bartholomew had a, a prejudice against the city of Nazareth because of what he has had because of what he has read about, about, about Nazareth. And for him, he felt that it was not possible for the Messiah to come from Nazareth. Many times, my dear brothers and sisters, we have our own prejudice, prejudices against people, against uh, 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 different people, against different nations, against different races. We have our prejudices. And today the church and the, the life of Bartholomew uh, uh, encourages us to try as much as possible to try to shed our prejudice against people. 
in today in today's world there are people that we we have a, a prejudice against we live in a world where some people or some countries uh, from our own assessment and from what we have uh, read we have prejudices against these people and sometimes it influences our relationship with them for instance in the world of today many people have a uh, prejudice against the germans because of the uh, uh, nazi regime of adolf hitler but not all germans supported adolf hitler today many people have a uh, prejudice against africans maybe because of what they have read and what they have had today many people have uh, prejudices against america maybe because of their uh, uh, dominance in the world politics Today, many people have prejudices against uh, uh, Muslims, maybe because uh, uh, terrorism has been, have, uh, uh, been have escalated in our own time. And many times, some people try to, to uh, uh, identify terrorism with, uh, with Islam. But my dear people of God, sometimes we make mistakes because of our prejudice, prejudices against people. We give a wrong interpretation of people because of the prejudice we have. That was the problem that Badlomi had in the, in the gospel of today. When he was told that Jesus is from Nazareth, because of the prejudice he had against Nazareth as a small city, and as a city that cannot be able to produce the, the Messiah, he was taken about, he was disappointed. But my dear brothers and sisters, we have to set aside our prejudices in order to be able to understand other people and also in order to be able to relate with other people in a, a good way. And then, when Bartholomew came to Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ looked at him and told him that here comes the Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Here comes the Israelite in whom there is no guide, in whom there is no deceit. My dear brothers and sisters, we have to ask ourselves, can Jesus look at us and examine our lives and tell us the same thing that he, he told Bartholomew in the gospel of today. This is a Christian that has no deceit. This is a Christian that has no falsehood in him. We live in a world where a falsehood has become a, 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 a tradition. We live in a world where fraud has become a, a great business. Many people uh, Many people are into fraud and into lies to deceive others and to dupe others. Can Jesus Christ look at us and examine our lives and look at us to the face and tell us that here comes the Christian in whom there is no deceit. Here comes the Christian in whom there is no falsity, in whom there is no guile. And again, Jesus told, told uh, uh, Nathaniel, When Nathaniel asked Jesus, how do you know me? We have not met before. How do you know everything about me? And Jesus told Nathaniel that even before when you were under the fig tree, I knew you. I saw you when you were under the fig tree. And Nathaniel was surprised. How is it possible that this man has seen me when I was under the fig tree? My brothers and sisters, what can we learn? That God knows us true and true. God knows us in our innermost heart. God knows us. God knows the type of life we live. When we are righteous, God knows. When we are dishonest, God knows. God knows our secret lives. God knows what we do in public and what we do in private. It is unfortunate that in the world of today, many people live in, a, in such a way that they, their life in, in, in private is a contradiction of their life in public. But we forget that God knows us true and true. God knows our innermost heart. God knows our innermost conscience. When we sit in our room to pray to God, God knows and God hears us and God is always close by our side. When we are in the chapel praying privately, God listens to us and God is very close to us and God hears our plea and is ready to answer our prayers. When in the secret of our lives, we commit sins and commit atrocities. God knows, because God knows our heart of not, heart. God knows our in, in, innermost conscience. Sometimes we may deceive people. We may come out and claim to be holy and righteous 
when we are not. We may be a, a righteous externally, but internally we are not righteous. But God knows us. What we do in the external, God knows. What we do in the internal, what we do behind closed no doors, is known by God. And on the last day, God will assess us by the way we live our lives, both in, in secret and then in the, in the open. And then, Nathaniel responded by, by telling Jesus, you are the Christ, you are the King of Israel. For the fact that you have known me, for the fact that you know my life, you know what I have been doing, that means that you, you are not an ordinary person. You are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. And Jesus responded by telling Nathaniel, you, you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree, but you will see greater things. You will see the angels in heaven, you will see the heaven thrown open, and the angels in heaven ascending and descending. My dear brothers and sisters, that is our, the, the promise God is making to each and every one of us. When we live a holy life, when we live a pure life, when we live a life that is worthy of our vocation, of our calling, then we'll be sure our lives, the way we live our lives, the way we conduct ourselves, that will qualify us to be qualified to enter the heavenly inheritance. Today, we celebrate the life of St. Bartholomew, who lived his life he, who spread in, the, in the spread of the gospel, who, who gave up his life for the spread of the gospel. And the church challenges us to follow the example of Bartholomew, to live a good, a good life, to live a life worthy of our vocation. To live a holy life, both in secret, both in private, both behind closed doors and in public. So that on the last day, just like St. Bartholomew, all of us will be crowned with the heavenly inheritance through Christ our Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, we pray to God, the Almighty Father, who gave to the world through Mary, his only son, our Savior and Prince of Peace. Okay. Prayer of the Faithful. Let us pray that the Holy Church, through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, receive from God abundance of that peace, which Jesus Christ brought into the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that the efforts of all people of goodwill in promoting peace and fraternal harmony be blessed and crowned with success, and the entire world may experience that great gift of God we pray to the Lord. Lord, we are our prayer. Let us pray that international institutions foster the search for peace among peoples, and that weapons of death be transformed into instruments of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are our prayer. Let us pray that rich nations and their governments, overcoming the temptations of power and superiority, rectify injustices towards poor nations, and help the many who are hungry, and indeed, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray that peoples who suffer because of war may once again find the gift of peace and concord, and that our diseased brothers and sisters share in the eternal joys of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord let us pray that the members of this assembly, united in celebration of these sacred mysteries, be found worthy to greet one another in peace and be true messengers and servants of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord we are now praying. Let's pray for our personal intentions now.
God Almighty and Eternal, you look with benevolence on every person. Grant to all the peoples of the world the grace to discover in the gospel message him who was born and came into the world as Prince of Peace. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, in unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may a sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. As we celebrate anew the feast today of St. Bartholomew, O Lord, we pray that we may obtain your help through the intercession of the Apostle in whose honor we bring you this sacrifice of praise through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and paths of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of heaven and earth, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Antonio, our Bishop, and our Bishop who presides this Eucharistic, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, and with the blessed apostles, Saint Bartholomew, and all your saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. May we marry to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. <coughs> Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and power and glory is yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, to set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. peace with you. May the mingling of the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ be to return like to us who receive it. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring us to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for us protection in mind and body. The healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word, Lord, my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring eternal life to us. May the bread of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
I confer a kingdom on you, just as my father has conferred one on me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, says the Lord. Let us pray. As we celebrate the feast day of blessed Apostle Bartholomew, we have received the pledge of eternal salvation, O Lord, that we pray that it may be of help to us both now and for the life to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We just want to thank God in a special way that a day like this, that we are celebrating the Feast of Bartholomew, we have a, a bishop from the north of India presiding over the Mass. What a mystery, but beyond all of us. So, my Lord, you are welcome. Thank you for accepting to offer this Mass on our behalf. Now he's going to bless the religious objects that you have. So make it available, if it's possible, separate them from other items and then receive God's blessing as he gives us the final blessing. Well, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, I am Bishop William Anthony from the Diocese of Mysore, the south of Karnataka, Karnataka in India. I happened to be in Europe to attend the new bishop's training program. I was just ordained last year. The Lord has given me the responsibility to shepherd his flock in the dice of my soul. I recommend myself for prayers, my priests, my religious, and the laity, so that we all work for his greater glory and for the kingdom of God on this earth. And now, let us seek God's blessings through Blessed Virgin Mary asking him to bless all the religious articles that we have purchased here to take home, to give to our near and dear ones, a souvenir perhaps, so that the blessings of Mother Mary at Fatima will reach to the people whom we love most. So we pray. God Almighty Father, we thank and praise you for all the blessings you have showered on each one of us especially for giving us your own mother to be ours. Bless all the pilgrims who come to this place of grace and blessings. Bless them. Bless the religious articles that they have so that through these articles, your blessings may reach to the ones who are not able to come to this place. Bless all those people who have asked for our prayers, Lord, those to whom we have promised our prayers, those to whom we have, who need our prayers, Lord, through the Blessed Virgin Mary, let all our intentions come true and let these religious articles be a sign and significance of your greater love for us. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now in the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. May God, who has granted you to stand firm on apostolic foundations, graciously bless you through the glorious merits of the holy apostles and Bartholomew. Amen. And may he who endowed you with the teaching of an example of the apostles make you, under their protection, witnesses to the truth before all. Amen. Amen. So that through the intercession of the apostles, you may inherit the eternal homeland, for by their teaching you possess firmness of faith. Amen. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Mass is ended. Let's go to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Our target of men, think over the real, our